Level, how are you? Here to give you the match we saw for Friday Night Smackdown that happened on December the 4th there, 2020, and main event. Uh, before I do that, I got these rasters at the hobby store. Um, I've never had these two before. Um, so, I'm going to show them back to you and comment below who you think it is. And in my next WWE video I'll do on... The Raw V review from like this week coming up, I'll show you who they are. So this is the first action figure. Only Kulu I'm gonna give you is he likes apples. That's about it. Now this one. This is the first ever WWE Superstar I had to get that was in a referee uniform. I had to pick it up. It was only ten bucks. Couldn't beat that deal. Um his arms a little bit messed up, but here, I'm going to do this. Maybe that tattoo there will help you out who this is. So who do you think this WWE Superstar is that's dressed up as a referee? Now on to the matches. Um, The opening match for SmackDown was Bailey facing Natalya one-on-one. -on -one. It was a good match. I just wish that it wasn't focused on Bianca Belair being our commentary. And our ringside in the match went a lot longer than it did. It was disappointing how much match time they had. Natalya won with the sharpshooter on Bailey to make her tap out. This whole feud between Bailey and Bianca Belair that's going to happen has to involve Natalya. She's in the mix. Don't leave her out of this feud. Put her in the feud. Make her a triple threat at TLC for the number one contendership or something. If you just go Bailey and Bianca, it's going to be a shame because Natalia is a really good superstar and she should be in this feud because since she's two weeks in a row been involved with Bailey and Bianca Barrier. Um, Pat Patterson has passed away. Um, he was the first ever Intercontinental Champion, the crown. Um, one of the old time greats. Um, they show pictures of him back when Andre the Giant had like, that big afro hairdo. And Pat Patterson was on top of his shoulders and that. And then a show picture of him and Joe Briscoe to Jetter. Um, so they had a tribute match. The match was all former Intercontinental Champions and the current Intercontinental Champion. The current Intercontinental Champion, Zami Zayn, teamed up with Dolph Ziggler because he's held the title before. No many times. And Sensei Nakamura has held the title like once. Um... Before they faced Rey Mysterio, that's held the title before Big E. Big E's very first title won in WWE history was the Intercontinental Championship. And Daniel Bryan has also held the title. Um, awesome match. Just from start to finish, it was awesome. Big E hit three massive, huge, big belly to belly suplexes and knock them on. Almost got the win, but Dolph Ziggler made the save. Um, back and forth action. Um, Daniel Bryan was going for a move off the top rope, and Dolph Ziggler at one point draw kicked him off the top rope onto the arena floor, and Daniel Bryan was holding on the back of his head. That didn't look good the way he landed. Um, but he continued the match. Um, Daniel Bryan won the match for his team with a small package on Sami Zayn. After the match, they still went at it each other, and um, Dolph Ziggler started to show off, and that allowed Daniel Bryan, Big E. And Rey Mysterio to take out Nakamura and Sami Zayn. And then they each took turns beating up Dolph Ziggler. This is why I didn't like. It, okay, I like Dolph Ziggler got the big end from Big E after the match. And Daniel Bryan gave him an atomic drop. But Rey Mysterio stood there and waited for Dolph Ziggler to fall onto the ropes before you do the 619. Like, just don't stand there. Just push the guy into the ropes. Like, that part was pathetic to see. Um... Also on SmackDown this week, you had, this match was really good, Baron Corbin faced Buddy Murphy in a rematch from last week. Last time, Buddy Corbin had backup. Remember the Forgotten Sons? If you don't, I don't blame you because they've been forgotten in WWE. Um, because Jackson Riker did a whole bunch of tweets and Twitter videos and that and messages about Donald Trump and the Black Lives Matter, and so WWE suspended him, took him off TV. But Wesley Blake and Steve Cutter, the other two members of Forgotten Sons, they didn't do nothing wrong. 
They didn't say nothing wrong. But they had to be punished as well. Uh, so finally they brought back those two on SmackDown. I didn't know who they were because they came out wearing hoodies and jackets until Michael Cole or Corey Graves, one of the two, said who they were. Thank you, whichever announcer it was that said that. Um, great match between Corbin and Murphy. Hard-hitting action. Um, Corbin came to fight, and he came for payback, and he delivered it. At one point, he grabbed Buddy Murphy outside the ring and flew him over the announce table. And that guy landed hard. That looked painful. Um, and the Mysterios, thankfully, did the right thing this week. Remember last week in my video, I said that they did stuff that Hills would do. I like tried to trip Corbin, distract him. So this week, they just stood outside the ring and just was themselves. That's what I like, because you guys are the good people in this feud. Not the bad people. Um... The Forgotten Sons attacked Mysterio and Dominic outside of the ring. Aaliyah Mysterio freaked out. She was scared. So Buddy Murphy jumped off the top rope onto the apron forward to attack the Forgotten Sons to help out the Mysterios. The, the Forgotten Sons ran back to the ring. So as Murphy ran in after them, he got caught by Corbin with the end of days for the one, two, three, way to go, Corbin. I hope 2021 he finally wins a singles title again. He's a former United States champion. Give them the Intercontinental Championship. That'd be nice to see. Um, your main event on SmackDown was Otis and Kevin Owens. Face Roman Reigns, Jay Uso, Paul Heyman ringside. Of course, typical Roman Reigns matches now. He comes out midway during the match. Jay Uso held his own the best he could. Um, I'm still impressed of how the news in Jay Uso has given him a singles run. I just hope when Jimmy Uso comes back, that they push these guys really hard. Still, not just like, okay, we're going to put you back in tag team, which they would do. But I mean, like, give them a lot more opportunities, a lot more storylines. Um, Roman Reigns, when he finally came out, Superman punched Otis out off the ring apron. Went outside the ring, attacked poor Otis, and delivered, I don't know how many, I think it was like two or three or four still step shots to his midsection with the still steps. So Otis had to be taken to the back, so it became a two-on-one handicap match. Kevin Owens fended off both Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. Well, I'm sorry, Jey Uso, because Roman Reigns refused to tag in during the match. Um, Owens hit the stunner on Jey Uso. Almost won the match, but Roman Reigns made the save. But as Jey Uso afterwards was going for the Uso splash, Roman Reigns wanted to be tagged in now, because Owens was down. Um, Jay Uso was like, oh, okay, fine. So he goes to tag him, and Owens knocks Roman off the ring apron. But there was a second stunner on Jay Uso. The Roman Reigns runs in, applies that chokehold he does, the guillotine there, and the referee calls for the bell. Um, also during this match, there's something else that happened I did not like. The referee, at one point, Roman Reigns got involved. The referee was like, I'm going to disqualify you. Uh, no, no, I'm not. No, I'm going to. No, I'm like, these referee mistakes is happening now. I guess it's like a gimmick that if he's doing. And it's sad, important, and takes away from the matches. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, after the disqualification loss, Jey Uso and Roman Reigns took turns with steel chairs and beat up Kevin Owens with them. Then Roman Reigns attacked Jey Uso with a steel chair. Because Jey Uso is the one that got this match set up. But guess since he didn't run it by Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns wasn't happy. So you have it for SmackDown. Definitely watch the show. Um, all the matches good. Um, just wish the winners match was a lot longer. Our main event, Alberto Carrillo faced Angel Garza one-on-one. -on -one. Great match. Um, Garza won with the super kick slash wing clipper combination. And the second match was Nikki Cross after a segment took on Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce beat Nikki Cross on main event. Um, it was an okay match. Could have been better. But Peyton Royce has shown that even though she's not part of a tag team with the Iconics anymore, Bailey Gay, she still got a lot of offer in the WWE. So way to go, Peyton. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye.